Hello, welcome back. Subscribe for whatever good that'll do you when the US is being eroded by a fascist minority party of Christian zealots. Anyways, with that happy thought out of the way, let's talk more about affinity and hearts to hearts. Heart, 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 heart to hearts. Yes. A topic I should have researched for last video instead of flying off the cuff of my seat. Eh, whatever. Last episode, I got confused by the wiki's plus eight, minus four deal in the heart heart pages. Why are those there? Unsure! But going over affinity benefits in regards to heart hearts? What does that read? Terrible read. Each choice can increase or decrease the affinity between the two characters by 50. Where did the plus eight, plus four, minus four, minus eight come from? Who knows? But what I didn't know is that regardless of outcome, the affinity between the two characters will increase by 300 at the end of the heart to heart. Therefore, the total affinity change can only be positive, no matter what you do, no matter what ending you go through. You either get plus 200 or plus 400, or plus 300, in that range. One of those three, that's not a range. You have three options. Math is bunkum. I think I know a specific character that I missed. And it needs to be daytime. To find her. Don't rub your face against that cat. Dorothy. Oh wait, is Dunban actually up here? He is! Why are you yes. naked? You cannot afford to be careless in Tefra Cave. The monsters pose a challenge even for the defense force. Yes? Eh, I'm not going. It should be good practice for you. I don't want to get in your way. <laughs> I love you, Dunban. You weird freak. Where's Liliana? You! Hello! Look at this. My dad is one of the stars shining in the night sky. This is a sad conversation I started out way too peppy. He watches over me every night. That's why I gaze out the window to see him too. There we go. Yeah, no, please talk to me. I can't see you anymore. Dad passed away last year. Now it's all thanks to him that I can live so peacefully. He helped save our colony. So Liliana... Where are you going, cat? Get back here. Yeah. I need to have Liliana... in the affinity chart in order for Dean to give his quest. I just... forgot that there was a child hanging out by Dunben's house for some reason. Anyways... Let's go back to Tefra Cave. Oh, I'm facing the wrong way. Tefra Cave! <laughs> they like frogs. Oh hey, monster types. There are many types of monster. The type of monster is shown in the target window. You can toggle enemy icons on or off in display settings from options via the system menu. Ordinary monsters will not attack unless you attack them. Visual types will attack when they see your character. Uh... We need to kill the willow bun of And it's aggressive.
Excellent! Forgive! Backslash! I took one of their paws. Well, I guess people carry rabbit's feet. For luck. Like sociopaths. Look! That looks safe! It is not. <laughs> oh, that's the map. <laughs> Irving. Oh, those Willow Bunnivs. Oh, I think we're actually over leveled, so they won't attack us on sight, right? Yeah, the Iron Bunnov will attack us on sight. The big thing about Ryan is that a lot of his attacks are AoE. So he tends to pick fights with people you don't want to pick fights with. So there we saw an example of level difference. When you are six or more levels higher than an enemy, even if it would normally be aggressive, it's not. Down here, mining Patrichev. I believe mining Patrichev is probably a lot of people's first experience with uniques. Oh, yours dead. Yeah, even two levels higher. Uniques are not to be underestimated. He hit hard. Right, guys? Yeah, frogs! <laughs> Let's go fight this other one. For all... For most... All... A lot of you... As, as I was looking at the wiki at things... I think unique monsters, unlike other monsters, have a 30% chance of respawning when you load an area. Oh, this looks like a bad idea. Let's do it. That's chain attack. Mine can topple, or we can increase damage. Oh. Nora, it's up to you. Alrighty. 
Azerite. Huh? He didn't get to extend the chain. Ah, don't look at me. And he was dead. <laughs> he keeps getting more people attacking us. Uh oh. Somebody's at the door. Don't look at me. Uh, what do I do? Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> and Fiora's dead. <laughs> Don't look at me. Get away from me. <laughs> Sell the bugworm was a bad idea. I need to go deal with the barking. Oh, well, this is good to know. If the leader is incapacitated, he will return from the previous landmark. I'll come back to this. Hold on. And we're back. Kind of. Ow. If the leader is incapacitated, you will return to the previous landmark, such as falling off a cliff, or hitting zero HP. When the leader's HP reaches zero, or the leader falls from too great a height, and their HP reaches zero, <laughs> the party will become incapacitated. You will be returned to the last landmark visited. Keep an eye on the party gauge. If the leader becomes incapacitated and incapacitated, incapacitated. In battle, but there is at least one block left in the party gauge, the battle will continue, and you will not be returned to the last landmark you visited. If you're not able to win a battle, check the level difference between your party and the enemy. Also remember to equip your party with strong weapons and armor too. Unfortunate, but not unexpected, considering how much problems we had with the other one. I could sneak past it. Past. Faces pass. And I'm homebound. Oh, we killed one of the. What? Oh! Why is it so small? <laughs> I've never seen that before. Hello. Hey guys. What's up? Back. You're there, but don't want to fight you again. And oh, cool! You're here again. Let's fight some frogs. Me and the cat cutting in from the future during the editing process. Just to say that I really prefer the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 method of handling unique monsters, where once you defeat a unique monster, a tombstone gets spawned in, and then thereafter just you can just choose when to respawn that unique monster by interacting with the tombstone. That was a very good system. Neat. We can't lose. That bun is going to attack us. Looking good too, Fiora.
We've got these bats and the bunov and. and uh, the fighting the bat. Around. Nothing's ever gonna keep us down. Yeah, you generally get a treasure chest for each group that you beat. So if they all get into battle at once, they just drop one treasure chest from the last one that you kill. While if you start a battle with one, and then another one comes in, and then another one comes in, and then another one comes in, you're going to get treasure chests for all of them. You're addressed for a nice day on the town. <laughs> Are these the Magmel ruins? Haven't you been here before? Nope. The Defense Force often uses it for training. But I come here to do research. It's not really a place that people go. Not surprising. There are monsters around here that use Mekon parts as armor. Was this built by the Mekon? I don't think so. There's a path for people to get in. It might have been a vehicle of some kind. Like the Defense Force hover transports. A vehicle? But it's so big. It's amazing technology. I wonder what kind of people made it. I ain't got a clue. Let's keep moving. The ether cylinders are up ahead. Right. Take shortcuts using skip travel. Use skip travel to return to landmarks you have previously visited. Open the map of the area you wish you wish to travel to. The following icons may be displayed on the area name list. Story destination. Story quest destination. Active quest destination. View the map and select the landmark you wish to travel to. It's probably a good idea to 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 return to the colony when your inventory is full, so that you can sell some items at the shop for money. How many things have you collected by now that you would need to sell things? Nothing? Alright, guy. Everyone, I'm gonna kill you. Go. Leave this fight to me. This one's mine. Get back here. We win! Let's not lose our heads though. We've definitely gotten stronger. Just gotta cult. Just gotta look around. Look around everywhere. Kneecap. Probably important. I wouldn't know. We'll come back later. Oh. This door will become available later. It won't open now. Why will it open later? Who can say? Hi, guys! I need to kill you for a quest. You know who else I need to kill? Walsike Winry. If you start fighting those guys, leave this fight to me. Oh! Really? Toppled. I'll help you. For friendship. Right 
Fiora does so much damage. It's a problem. And now he's pushing her away. And he's dead. Ah, why are you looking at me? Oh, walls like Winry. It's so scary. But yeah, if you just start fighting those Mel lizards, walls like Winry will walk up and attack you and probably kill you. Like, the male lizards, they're not very tough, especially at this level. Oh yeah, baby! Should be okay if we fight like this. And they all gave treasure chests. Huh. Filled with their skin. <laughs> Select. Oh well. Here's some more lizards. This door's blocked off. And the cylinder hanger landmark. Which I believe. Yeah, look at it! Oh, yeah! I've been to every location and accessed every landmark. Which means that the entire map just fills out automatically. All those little gaps in it, all filled in, baby. What type of cave? Oh no, I haven't been to all the places in Teffer Cave. Because there's a bunch over here. I should probably stop wiggling around like that. That we can only get through, through that door. So there's a whole bunch of other areas in Teffer Cave. Ignore that pickaxe. That'll be important later. Oh yeah. Oh, there's little mini batteries underneath the bigger batteries. That's cool. Oh, I really like the look of this game. Honestly, I kind of preferred the rougher appearance of the originals. You know, requirements for that. The rougher look that the original game came out with, and the port to the 3DS had. I really enjoyed the look of that. It is nice that it's clear that... Oops. <laughs> it is nice to look at this... baby-faced pretty boy. Thinking in and out of 
existence. <laughs> But I did like the rougher styles. Ugh. This. Hold on. <laughs> oh, wow. Right here. Thanks for the help, Shulk. I'll start collecting them up. You two, hold on a sec. It's full of ether cylinders. Hey, why do we have to come all the way here to get them? Isn't there an ether cylinder fueling station in the colony? Well, refining the ether takes a long time down there. And sometimes cylinderization fails. And there are so many cylinders here for us already. It's more reliable than making them ourselves. Right. And Colony 9's anti-air batteries and mobile artillery are standardized for these cylinders, so they can be used straight away. I see. You know, this place is in good condition considering it's ancient. It might be that there's some form of technology being used to preserve it. It's just a shame we don't understand its secret. Shulk? But I'll solve it one day and show you. If it's just technology that someone created in the past, it's not incomprehensible. We'll come to understand it one day. Don't go trying too hard. We can come and get ether cylinders whenever we need them. Besides, it's a good place for Defense Force training. Yeah, so good that you didn't even want to come here without Shulk to back you up. Anyway, did you collect the cylinders? Yep, all done. Thanks. Just come by yourself from now on. Shh, be quiet. <gasps> Are they Mekon? I don't know. But it looks like we'll have to destroy them. In that case, just leave them to me. <laughs> These guys are fun. I'll be right back. So, while that freak is off doing something else, can we just take a moment to appreciate that line read of Rhine's? It was just the best. Right, and Colony 9's anti-air batteries and mobile artillery are standardized for these cylinders, so they can be used straight away. It sounds like someone reading wrote off a script reading wrote reading straight off a script you can tell that this isn't off a script because I don't know what I'm talking about but but that makes sense in this context because Ryan seems like the person when talking about standardization of the cylinders to be reading off of a script he read once. It fits completely, and it's wonderful. I've returned. Targeting and commands. Switching attack targets. S target a different monster by pressing L or R. This may come in handy when fighting several monsters at once. And you can issue a commands to the party by holding down ZR, the trigger on the right, and using the directional pad. Focus attacks, aim for the monster the leader has targeted, engage at will, each party member fights independently, whatever that means, and come to me, stop attacking and regroup around the leader. Oh, 
Ah, final defense mode. That's not good. Or it wouldn't have been Fiora, good. Are you okay? I'm fine. How about you? I'm all right. Thanks to you and Ryan. What on Bionis were those? I've never seen anything like them. Could they have been Mechon? No. Slide. I think they were something left by the civilization that built this vehicle. They didn't seem like Mechon to me. But why did they only show up now? I don't know. But they were probably built to protect this place. They might have been activated in response to something. But I don't think that something could have been us. Please, let's go back. I don't want to be here anymore. Me neither. And we've already got the ether cylinders. Huh? What's going on? Listen! What is that? That sound. <sighs> In the sky! Oh, oh, it's a... This can't be. No way. Macon. How? Didn't my brother destroy them all a year ago? Could that defense mechanism have responded to the Macon? Let's get back to the colony. Come on. 